I've been getting a lot of questions about plate carrier setup, um, how I set mine up, uh, kind of my philosophy, that type of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and talk about plate carriers, how you can do a basic setup, and hopefully it can give you guys a good kind of base to jump from from there as far as setting up your own plate carrier if you haven't already, or if you have a plate carrier setup, maybe make you think a little bit. In any case, I'm sure some people are going to disagree with me, so prepare to get angry or maybe learn something. In any case, with the plate carrier, there's kind of three main things that we're trying to do with it. We're trying to, one, stop holes. Two, plug holes. Three, create holes. So we're going to start with number one, which is stopping holes. It's kind of the point of the plate carrier. It's armor, correct? So there's a couple different types of armor that you can run into out there. You have your sappies, you have your civilian type armor, and then you have steel plates. I typically go with sappies because a lot of these plate carriers that I'm wearing, such as the Cry Precision JPC, um, the uh, LBTs, the 1694s, those are made to primarily hold sappies. Now, can they hold other plates? They can, but they're probably made to hold sappies, and because of the sappies fit them better, so that's typically what I stick with. On the Cry JPC right here, I have medium sappies in it, and I'm using a Cry medium plate carrier, so it's meant to fit medium sappies. It couldn't fit the large plates. If I went to a Cry large JPC, I could still fit medium plates. There's gonna be a little bit more wobble. Some people like that. It's just gonna depend. Now here's the thing about the Cry JPC in particular, or some of these other plate carriers that are made super minimalistic, which is kind of the trend nowadays. Um, they'll fit the plate that they're meant that they're designed to use. So sappies end up usually being a little bit smaller than the civilian um, kind of standard, which is 10 by 12. So if you're trying to put a 10 by 12 in the JPC, it's going to fit, but you're going to have um, some issues, maybe a little bit more premature wear because it's a little wider than the typical sappy is. So just be aware of that going into it. So if you have 10 by 12s, you might want to go with a large JPC or a larger plate carrier so it can um, encompass the entirety of that plate and not uh, get some of that premature wear. When it comes to um, sappy armor, e-sappy armor, uh, what's important to know is that you have um, a couple different types. One of the most common types that you see out there and that I see being sold is what's called in conjunction with. That means that the plate alone is not rated at what it's rated at. So for example, you have um, a level three or three A or something like, with, something like that. But if it's a in conjunction with armor, that means that it needs some type of soft armor backers or something like that in order to get it to the level that it's rated at. Without that, you're not gonna have the level of protection that you want or that you need. So just be aware of that, be aware of what type of armor you're dealing with. If you're going for AR-500 steel, which is definitely an option, make sure you have some type of anti-spall coating because, hey, that AR-500 steel is definitely going to stop the round that's incoming. However, because that round is impacting into steel, it's going to spall, which means it's going to spatter out. So, hey, it stops the round from hitting your chest, and the spall comes up, hits you under the chin, and drives up into your brain and kills you. Hey, pretty cool, dude, you know. Um, you didn't die from a shot to the chest. You just died from spall, but you still died. So make sure that you're kind of... Um, that if you're picking a type of plate, that you're aware of the weaknesses and the strengths. Make sure you get those anti-spall coatings on that AR-500 armor. Um, there are a couple different cut, uh, cuts of plates when it comes to armor. So you have standard sappy cut. It's kind of a common one. It's basically you have a block, have little edges cut off on the side like I have here on these sappies, and it allows you to get that butt sock of the gun right up in your shoulder so you can shoot from there. Works pretty good. I find that sappies work really well for me. There's a more aggressive cut. Those are known as the swimmer's plates. Again, it's just a little more angled, a little more room, a little easier to get that gun up. Those are awesome. They're also gonna cost you a little bit more, so just be aware of that. Um, you also have the square ones. It's kind of ancient technology. If you can, make sure you get at least sappy cut just so you have a little bit of room to bring that shoulder, um, excuse me, that butt sock up into your shoulder so you can shoot more accurately. Uh, as, far, as far as placement of your plates, um, this is where everyone's going to get super pissed off and uh, disagree with me or argue with me. But uh, plates have been getting smaller. Carriers have been getting, been getting smaller. Uh, it used to be, you know, 2010, you had the IOTV and a couple other, those older armor type systems, and they're going all the way up from your chest, all the way down to your stomach. Um, what I was kind of realized is being able to move is really important. So plates have gotten some. Plates haven't specifically gotten smaller, but the plate carriers have gotten a lot smaller. You've seen a lot more minimalistic designs, and it's good. But just be aware of these minimalistic designs that you need to wear them properly to ensure that they're protecting what they need to protect. The plates are meant to protect the heart and lungs, kind of those major vessels right there. So with the front plate, where it needs to be is approximately the point where the collarbones meet. So that's where the top of the plate should be, and that's going to effectively protect your heart and lungs. Now, again, a lot of people are going to argue with me saying, hey, it should be lower, it should be higher. Um, I'm going to put up a little, little picture right here. Hopefully this explains kind of where I'm coming from. 
That's going to be the proper way to wear it, just to ensure that you're protecting what you need to protect. On the back, some people think they need to be super high right up against their neck. That's not the case. It actually needs to be about the level of about T1, T2, somewhere right around there, depending on your body and how much kyphosis slash curve you have on your back. So I'm going to turn right here. On the back, you can see that it's about level of T2 or so. That's about level with my, uh, the bottom of my shoulders right here. That's where it is on me. Now everyone's going to be a little bit different based on their body and how much curve they have in their back. Just realize that. So you need to size, it up, size the straps up to yourself a little bit, making sure that it's good to go for you. Side plates is also an option. People are like, hey, I um, need to protect my sides. I don't want to get through and through heart and lungs, right? It's a bad way to die. You can definitely do them. Um, a lot of the carriers nowadays are using skeletonized systems or something like that where you have to buy and insert uh, so that you can get them installed. Um, things, rigs like the Mayflower rig, um, pretty sure the LBT-694 would have to check it have those little pockets so you can put the side armor plates in there. It is an option, it just reduces mobility, it just depends on your mission set, what you're kind of going into, or depending on your unit SOPs, kind of what you're dealing with. So, just another option, guys. So we've talked about stopping holes, let's talk about plugging holes. So you have your armor on, you're invincible, but you got a ton that's still uncovered. You got your arms, legs, uh, gut, that type of stuff, liver to some extent, so that's bad. You get shot there, you bleed out, it's going to suck. So, you know, you know, you might have like the most Gucci equipment on, the sickest plate care and the sickest armor, but hey, you get shot in your brachial artery, you get severed and you bleed out. I mean, you know, what good is all your Gucci gear? I mean, somebody else is going to get it. That's kind of cool. I mean, if you want to be given like that, hey, be my guest. But I prefer to have a lot of first aid on me because I think that plugging in holes is going to be one of the most... Um, beneficial things that you can have. So it comes to plugging holes, not just on me, but also on others. So I actually carry two individual first aid kits. I carry one that's belt mounted and I carry one that's on my plate carrier. The one that's on my plate carrier is for somebody to come up to me. If I'm on the ground bleeding out, they can get to my IFAC, get that on me. Typically what I have in my IFAC is I have an extra tourniquet. I have hemostatic agents so I can stop that bleeding. And I have a couple of miscellaneous things, such as really bandages, other things, nasopharyngeal tube, gloves, just so I can help that guy out. Um, speaking of tourniquets, um, I carry multiple tourniquets on me. You can never have enough. Um, what's important is that you have one that's easily accessible. So I have one right up front, so I can just grab it, get to it, pull it out. Um, have one that you can get to, because being able to stop bleeding on your own is important. Always have a tourniquet on you. You don't have to use a pistol pouch. You can also... I uh, use it from rubber bands or zip ties or whatever to get it attached to you. Some people like to put it up on the shoulder. Some people like to put it on the front of the plate carrier. Just they put it somewhere where you know where it is that we can get to it. When it comes to my belt mounted um, bed kit, I just have an individual first aid kit right here. It has all the same items that I have in my med kit that's on the back of my plate carrier. And the whole point is, is again, having the extra tourniquet, hemostatic agents, nasopharyngeal tube, gloves, things like that. That way I can either A, treat myself or B, treat somebody else. So again, I have two IFACs on me and then about three tourniquets. All right, so we talked about plugging holes, which is vitally important. If you don't plug a hole, you're gonna die. So make sure you got a med kit on you. If you got a bunch of Gucci gear and you don't have a med kit, man, you're in the wrong. You got something wrong with yourself. So you better start either doing some push-ups or fix yourself, do something. Um, so we've talked about stopping holes, talked about plugging holes. Now, what everyone wants to talk about is creating holes, right? Everyone wants to talk about all their loadouts, how many mags they carry, all that type of thing. So I subscribe to the theory that you should do about six plus one. So six mags on you, plus one on the gun. Now I don't mean six mags just stacked straight out in front of you. Because when it comes to plate carriers, before we even talk about getting the mags on them, I like to have something that's a low profile. The lower the profile, the better. Um, there's a big argument about having a flap on your, or your mags like a house that has flaps versus not. Um, I use a combination of both for a variety of reasons, but the point is have it nice and flat. Because if you have to hit the ground, start skull dragging, and you have a bunch of crap sticking out here, I see a lot of guys that got like rows and rows of mags out in front of them. That's super cool, man. I mean, you, get, you can really sustain the fight, but you got to hit the ground, and you can't get yourself flat to the ground. It's, uh, it's going to be a crappy day. So make sure that you have it controlled, right? Make sure that you don't have too much stuff on the front of you, on the sides. Keep it nice and spread out. Keep it low profile if at all possible. All right, so as far as my mags are concerned, I've got one on my belt line, and I can get to that for emergency type reload. For more administrative type reloads, I've got the five that I have up here, one in a flap, and then the other four are just up front, and one in a fast mag. As far as bolts forward, bolts back, or which way you want those bolts facing, um, everybody does a different thing. I like to have my bolts facing to my right, because when I grab, after I eject that mag, I'm going to reach down, grasp, then pull up and rotate up and in. 
some people like to have that mag the other way and they grasp it some weird way. I don't know how they do it. They do some voodoo magic and they rock it in there. So I prefer mags facing, excuse me, bolts facing to my right, but everybody's going to be different. Obviously, if you're left-handed, you're going to face a bolt, face those bolts a different way because you're going to be grabbing the opposite way. It also brings up another good point. Some people like to have the last mag right here facing the other way. That way, if they're shooting weak side or support side or whatever you want to call it, they can more easily grab that mag. Again, it's an option. So many different ways to set up your plate carriers, guys. I just like to have all of my mags facing the same way on my plate carrier that way. I just know which way they're going to go. I'm not guessing as I'm trying to reach across. When it comes to my belt uh, mounted magazine pouch, I have that facing a different way. My belt mounted magazine pouch, I'm using an HSGI Taco with a belt slide adapter. I have that facing back because as I reach back to grab my magazine, I'm going to naturally have my head back. That's going to allow me to simply grab, rotate it up and in, and lock that into place. That's what I've done. It works for me. A lot of other people do that as well. That doesn't mean it's right. That just means a lot of people do it because to some extent or another, it works. Choose something that works for yourself when it comes to that type of stuff. When it comes to your mag setups, just have something where you can easily perform emergency reloads, administrative reloads, and that you can manage your magazines and where they're going. Just make sure you're taking care of yourself. Another thing to think about as far as your plate carrier setup, guys, is going to be comms, right? So I don't have my comms on here right now because I'm not going to deal with that. It's a whole other subject that can take up a whole lot of time. But typically I have them mounted right side. And usually I have it on the inside pouch. That way it's just easier to route through and that type of thing. But hey, depending on the types of comms that you're running, you're going to have to have your own little doohickey and setups, things like that. We'll get into that later. No big deal. You notice too, as far as my plate carrier setup goes, guys, I have my right side mostly clear. That's because that's my pistol side. So I like to have that clear because as I reach for my gun, I don't like a bunch of pouches and crap to get in the way. The holster I'm using right here is the T-Rex Arms uh, Ragnarok. That's light compatible. It's a little level one retention holster. It's just tensioned. Pretty awesome little design. It has a little leg strap. Leg strap. I'm just using a uh, Safari Land mid-ride. But even still, the strap helps really keep it from moving anywhere. It's not so much a drop leg. Um, again, mid-ride, big fan. So just another thing you can use. So I like to have it clear. That way I'm easily able to grasp down, get to my holster, draw my weapon. Again, the less stuff I can carry on me, the better, right? When it comes to this, to especially a plate carrier, guys, you don't want a whole lot on you because it's going to make just a, a headache for you you're trying to move around. Keep it as minimalistic as possible. It's going to save you a lot of time. If you have mission essential stuff that needs to be on you, you can have a small pack like I have right here, which is the Cry GP pouch. It's one of their largest, one of their larger ones or the largest one. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but I usually have hydration there. So I have about, I think it's a two liter, uh, two liters of water. So I can go off of that. If I need to do something longer, this pack easily packs down so I can put a day pack on, something like that, or a three day assault pack, however you call it, whatever you, you want to call it. And then I can extend that mission for a longer duration of time. Again, just different things that can work for you guys. There are a lot of other really good uh, packs out there that you can mount onto the back of your plate carrier. Again, it's going to depend on the size of your plate carrier. You don't want a giant pack that's like hanging off. The modular salt pack is a really cool pack that you can mount onto your plate carrier. But in the, in the case of the Cry JPC, which is a pretty small PC, that thing hangs straight off. So didn't want that on there. Some other good um, packs you can put on, you can use the uh, Haley Strategic um, flat pack. You have the uh, tag combat sustainment pack. They have a little mag sticking out that way you can reach back do all cool guy stuff and grab your mags from back there. Look pretty cool. That's honestly, it's half the battle. If you don't look cool, what's the point? All right, guys, remember three main components to a plate carrier, stop holes, plug holes, create holes, and that priority level. So make sure you're setting up your plate carrier so it can keep you alive. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Tell me what you want next. You guys are asking a bunch of stuff. So, Happy to make videos, pass on some knowledge. Again, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Catch you next time.